Okay, and our second speaker is going to be talking about implementing linearizability in systems with tens of thousands of machines and communication times of the order of a few microseconds. So I'm pleased to introduce Sao Jin Park from Stanford. Hi, <coughs> I'm Sao Jin Park from Stanford University. I will talk about how to implement linearizability at large scale and low latency. Systems have given up strong consistency for scalability. The previous talk tackled the problem by implementing distributed transaction with high performance and scalability. Now I will talk about another approach to solve the same problem. We suggest a distinct layer for linearizability as a solution for achieving strong consistency without impacting performance and scalability of today's systems. So we designed a reusable infrastructure for linearizability, which we call RIFU in short. And RIFU changes at least once RPCs to exactly once RPCs by saving RPC results and saving uh, and avoiding re-executions. It is tolerant to cluster reconfigurations such as data migrations and crash recovery. And RIFU implemented in RAM Cloud, which is a very fast distributed key value store, and it only added 500 nanoseconds of latency, which is less than 5% of existing write operation of RAM Cloud. And we also verified the reusability of Ripple by implementing t transactions on RAM Cloud. A distributed transaction spanning three server commits in only 22 microseconds, and TPCC benchmark showed it outperformed the H store. An operation is linearizable if it appears to happen exactly once at some time point between when a client sends a request and receives a response. In other words, no client of system, either the one initiating the request or other clients operating concurrently, can observe contradictory behavior. So this is the strongest form of consistency for concurrent systems. However, most distributed systems today don't provide linearizability. They implement at least one semantics by retrying failed operations and making operation semantics idempotent. However, the repeated execution of idempotent operation can be problematic with concurrency. So let's see an example. In this example, two clients operate on the same object. First. Client A writes 2 to the object, and server updates the value to 2 in Drupal storage, but it crashes just before responding back to client A. After recovery, the object value stays at 2, and client B sees the value of object as 2. And it now updates the value to 3. Now, this client A hasn't heard back from server about its initial request of writing so it retries the request of writing to. Server has no way to know it already processed the RPC, so it re-executes, and now the object value is changed to two. And consequently, client B observes two writes from client A. So from this example, we can see that we need exactly one semantics, not just at least one semantics. RIFO is changed to provide exactly one semantics by saving results of RPCs and allows systems to handle retries by returning saved results instead of re-executing. Now I will talk about four key ideas of RIFO architecture. The first key idea of RIFO is that we need unique identifications for RPCs to detect client retries. So all RPC requests should have the same ID. For scalability, the assignment of RPC ID happens in client locally, and to make ID unique within cluster, RPC ID is composed of two parts, a, client, a unique client ID and a monotonically increasing per client sequence number. 
After detecting a retry with the unique RPC ID, a server should respond with the original re result. To do so, we must save the RPC result durably as an operation complete. The completion record has two components, RPC ID and RPC result to be returned to the client. The completion record should be as durable as the data and that it must be created atomically with the mutation of the data. Without completion record, a server cannot find the response for the retries. So every retry should find its completion record if one exists. It is a difficult problem in distributed systems since data moves around, especially during crash recovery. So let's see an example. Here a client is writing onto an object and which is residing in server one and the initial request of write was successfully applied to the durable storage and the completion record was generated on server one. Now server crashes right before responding back to the client. Then the object is reconstructed in another healthy server, server two. But the completion record stays at server one. Now the retry of write request is directed to server two, but the server doesn't own the completion record and it cannot handle the retry. From this example, we see that the completion rec record should also migrate as the data migrates. To migrate completion record correctly, we associate each RPC to a specific object so that the underlying system can move the completion record with the object. Finally, uh, we want to reclaim space for completion record eventually. Interestingly, the lifetime of completion record is not the same as the lifetime of object values. Since retries can still arrive after an object value has been update by, updated by another client. Therefore, we must retain the completion record if there is a possibility of client retrying the RPC. There are two cases that a server is sure that a client will not retry. The first, a client actively acknowledges the receipt of RPC results and promises not to retry. To do that, the client piggybacks the acknowledgement on RPC requests. And second case is when a server detects a client crash using lease-based mechanism. All alive clients maintain their own leases until their death. And as a lease expires due to a client crash, servers delete all completion records for the crashed client. Let's see an overall picture now. And a client is writing value two on an object. On server side, a refill component called result tracker tracks all completion record. As a new write arrives, server updates the result tracker to denote the execution has started. After marking this start, server can update the object value to two and create a completion record atomically. As a last step, result tracker updates the RPC status to finished and then server responds back to the client with the success. This diagram shows all steps we discussed by timeline. Let's see how Riffle handles client retries. Riffle assumes uh, that client retry can arrive at any time without any restrictions. So if a client retry request arrives after result tracker mark the RPC has started, then either see RPC is in progress. Then the client should wait for the ongoing execution and retry later. If a retry request arrives after RPC tracker marked RPC is finished, and either get the saved result from the original executions. With this retry handling mechanism, we achieved exactly one mechanism. We implemented Riffle on top of RAM Cloud, which is an in-memory key value store, and our Riffle implementation only added minimal overhead on the existing RAM Cloud operations. 
The underlying system RAM cloud is a general purpose distributed in-memory key value storage system, and it ensures durability by replicating all data to three remote backups synchronously. It also features fast recovery, scalability, and low latency. Especially RAM Cloud is a very good, good fit to test Riffle since it has super low latency and high availability. With a slow system such as MySQL, we wouldn't be able to notice latency increase even with a much slower implementation. Also, RAM Cloud's fast crash recovery made retry rendezvous a non-trivial problem. Riffle core infrastructure for RAM Cloud is about 1,200 lines of C++. With the Riffle core, only 17 lines were needed to transform a single, linearizable, single non-linearizable operation into a linearizable one. And using Riffle, we made simple write, conditional write, and increment linearizable. And all three operations have almost same latencies, so we only report the uh, simple write latency today. For our experiments, we used a machine with uh, four cores at around three gigahertz, and they are equipped with fast infiniband NIC. We used the RAM Cloud special transport, which talks directly with the network card without going through kernel. So let's see how Riffle impacts on RAM Cloud's latency. This graph shows the reversed CDF of write latencies, and y-axis is the proportion of data points in log scale. So let's look at a point. This point means 1% of request took 69 microseconds or more. Also, if you look at the median value, Riffle made write operation linearizable by only adding 500 nanoseconds on top of 13.5 microseconds of latency. From the overall picture, the two lines are almost identical, showing Riffle's impact on latency is very minimal. This graph shows the write throughput of a single server. As you can see here, there was no statistically measurable impact on the throughput. Ripple keeps track of RPC states for every active client, and the question of scalability impact of many client states can be raised. But the, thanks to the efficient garbage collection, per client state occupies only about 116 bytes of server's main memory, which will add up to 116 megabytes for one million clients. Also, we measured the latency impact of handling many client states, and we used one physical client machine to simulate one million clients. As you can see from the graph, even one million client state didn't slow down systems significantly. So far, we showed Refool can make simple operations linearizable and we wanted to see the case for more complex operations as well. So Riffle is the implementing our two-phase commit protocol for transactions, which is similar to Symfonia, and it is designed to have the fewest possible round trips. A client can use transaction class to operate on data. After, after it is finished with the transaction, it should invoke a commit. Our transaction uses optimistic concurrence control, and all data, all data mutations are just cached locally in client until the commit starts. As a client invokes commit, all stated mutations are transmitted to servers. Before applying the mutations, the commit pro protocol checks the versions of objects haven't changed since last reads. Here we use two-phase commit, and next few slides we will focus on the transaction commit protocol itself. The whole two-phase commit process is driven by a client as it was in Symfonia. The first phase is a prepare phase, and which talks, 
to servers to verify that uh, an object hasn't changed, and if so, lock the object droply. Then each, ser each server responds back to the client whether the version check and locking was successful. If all servers participating in a transaction respond to commit vote, the client send this commit decision to the participating servers. Otherwise, it will send abort decisions. Interesting point is that the fate of tr a transaction is determined after first phase. This allows a client to process decision phase asynchronously, reducing cli client block time to one round trip time plus one log write time. Since the transaction commit protocol is driven by a client, a client crash can leave objects locked for an indefinite time. As a service is a lock being held longer than expected, it can ask the transaction recovery coordinator to start recovery. The recovery coordinator is picked from the participant servers, and the recovery coordinator drives two-phase commit as if it was a client. And one difference is that recovery coordinator sends request abort RPCs instead of prepare RPCs, since since recovery coordinator doesn't know the detail of all mutations in a transaction, it cannot send prepare RPC to, instead of client. The request abort asks servers whether the client's prepare succeeded previously. If so, server will return the commit vote. If not, servers durably abort the transaction and return abort vote. After collecting all votes, the decision phase is the same as the two-phase two commit by client. To meet the dura durability requirement of a server's vote, we simply made prepare RPC linearizable. Since multiple retries will always return the same vote, we can deal with the server crashes simply by retrying prepare RPCs until the failed server gets recovered. For client crashes, we made result request abort RPC compatible with the prepare RPC. And when a client sends prepares, all participant servers are informed about our RPC IDs for prepare RPCs. And Riffle handles request abort by using the same RPC ID initially assigned by the client and writes the completion record of prepare. Consequently, the concurrent commit protocol driven by a client and the recovery master will always result in the same outcome without any problems. We implemented the transaction on top of RAM Cloud and the refill based transaction has very low latency and high performance. This graph shows commit latency by the number of servers participating a transaction. The box on the left shows committing a transaction spanning three servers with three objects takes only 22 microseconds. Recall that a simple linearizable write takes 14 microseconds. On the other hand, the extremely large transaction with 60 servers and 300 objects takes 385 microseconds. As you see from the slope of lines, latency increases pretty linearly. We used industry standard TPCC benchmark to compare our systems against HDOR, which is a state-of-art main memory database system. The key transaction in TPCC is new order transaction, which involves about 23 objects. Other than the new order transaction, there are four more transaction types in TPCC. So far, we reported transaction commit latency, but now we will report end-to-end -end latency, including all read and computation time. To compare our mechanism fairly with HStore, we ran benchmark with both fast kernel bypass transport and kernel TCP transport. 
This graph shows both latency and throughput of the TPCC benchmark. The lower plot shows aggregate cluster throughput in terms of the number of committed new order transactions per minute. The upper plot shows the observed latency of new order transaction while performing the throughput benchmark. HStore was a very, very configurable, so we tuned HStore for throughput and latency to show its two extremes. Both RAM Cloud with kernel t bypass and TCP, which are in red line and orange line, had higher throughput than both HStore configurations. Even RAM Cloud over TCP has from 10 to 1,000 times lower latency than HStore. Our primary bottleneck on throughput was a serial log replication, so the batching technique can improve our throughput further. We believe storage system should have both linearizability and transactions eventually. Tra traditional databases have built a large transaction mechanism and then implemented exactly one's mechanism using the transaction. A well-known example is queued transaction processing. Other th on the other hand, we built a linearizability mechanism first as a foundation, and then built a transaction on top of the linearizability. The distinct linearizability layer has three key benefits. For operations which doesn't require multi-object transactions, linearizable RPCs will be much faster than using heavyweight transactions. Also, implementing transaction means total rebuilding of a system, but linearizability can be implemented as a small add-on to existing RPC systems. Finally, the linearizability layer took out a big chunk of transaction mechanism and significantly simplified implementing transactions. Until today, people have given up strong consistency for large-scale systems. But we showed linearizability as a distinct layer can provide both strong consistency and low latency on a large-scale system. We implemented linearizability on very low latency key value store and transforming single op simple operation into linearizable ones only added 500 nanoseconds of latency and didn't degrade throughput. The linearizability layer made implementing transaction easier and the transaction has the lowest possible latency by its design and showed about 20 microseconds of latency for simple distributed transaction commits. And it also outperformed the H-Store in terms of throughput and latency. Thank you for listening, and is there any questions? Hello, Malte Schwarzkopf again from Cambridge and MIT. Um, so the completion records, uh, are, the, do they get replicated? Because one of the motivations you had early on in the talk and which is also mentioned in section 4.4 in the paper is that due to a crash, an object may end up migrating. But my understanding is that if you have an ongoing RPC that has completed on the server side, it created a completion record there. And if that server then fails, and the, another server takes over serving that ob, uh, ob, object, the completion record won't be there unless you've replicated it. And if you're replicating it, how, how are you doing this? Um, so the completion record has the same, it should be created atomically, and also the, it uses the same replication mechanism as the object data. So, and the, during the crash recovery, the server should, should not respond to the request until the, all the completion record and objects has been recovered. For, so until server waits until completion get record gets recovered for specific objects. So, like. so does the completion record get created in more than one place? 
No, no, like... But if the machine is dead where the completion record is and it's not responding, then I can't recover it, right? Um, so the, the so client will uh, see the server is still recovering the data for a specific object. So the completion rec record and the object has the same uh, object ID identifications. So we the system can be sure that both of them are moved to, to the same server and like. Okay, I'll yeah. catch you afterwards, so, like, it's yeah. fine. Sorry. Hey, uh, this is Menak Ghosh from UAC. So you said uh, Riffle works well for low latency da databases, right? So I was wondering if you can comment on what would be the overhead like of Riffle protocol on traditional databases like Cassandra? Um, so can you repeat the question, sorry. Like, so, so, so I wanted to know like the performance overheads that you said for Riffle, is it yeah. the property of the system like RAM Cloud? Yeah. And uh, what would it be if? Oh yeah, like the, it would be all, also same as like so like Riffle basically didn't edit any more RPCs or there is no more, no additional communication between servers and it only, it always piggyback the writing. So even for writing completion record, it kind of piggybacks that onto the object mutations as well. So like must be like, it should have this almost same latency as the implementation on top of RAM Cloud. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Eddie Kohler, Harvard. Um, so you have linearizability, assuming that the clients don't fail or lose their leases. Uh, the paper says that farm doesn't. The farm paper claims strict serializability, which implies linearizability. So there must be some definitional difference. Can you explain it? So like from my understanding, um, farm tries to, from client's, client's view, Farm tries to tr do transaction, but if that request gets lost or something weird happens, then uh, farm just gives up and don't retry and do cannot make sure the actual operation is went through. How is that different from your system if a client loses their lease because of the network flipped? So like, if the request was lost or server crashes and the transaction request doesn't get through to the server, then uh, our implementation retries until, the, until we actually succeed the uh, RPC. But the farm just return, the, return to the client that some error has happened and don't know whether transaction went through or not. So that's my understanding. Thank you.